Hi everyone, um, new tutorial here, and this one will be on vector layers in Clip Studio. Um, this is sort of for a friend who's recently trying them out and hopefully um, will like them. I personally have you know, fallen in love with them and I think they're a great tool. Um, one that's been implemented into the program for a very long time actually, it's, um, well I've, I've um, used Clip for a number of years now and when I started using the program they were there. Um, I think they're specifically there for inking, but I don't see a lot of artists really use them too much. I think probably because they're a bit confusing at first, and on the surface they don't really look like they they can do too much for you. But um, upon experimenting and using the tools and stuff, I see that it's, it can actually do quite a lot for you. So um, I'll try and explain that, as well as um, give an example. I'll have a sort of like like the last video. I'll have sort of a speed paint. Um, example of where I um, do most of the work and then um, just sort of finish it off by explaining and uh, hopefully encouraging you guys to give them a go because like I said I definitely think they've helped me out quite a lot. Um, first of all just exactly what a vector layer is compared to a raster layer. Um, a raster layer is like your basic normal layer that you'll get when you open up the program, when you open up any program really. Um, aside from maybe Adobe Illustrator, but they work almost solely with vectors. Um, the raster layer is you, yeah, right here, you draw on it, and it's pixels on a canvas, you can't really do much with it, you're just making marks, and that's fine, it does most of the work, I do all of my colouring on um, raster layers, and as well as sketching and stuff, it's, you know, just your basic layer type, not a problem. Um, where vector layers come in, they, um, they're not great with, um, sensitivity, like, for example, um, this is the brush that I use to color with, and then on a vector layer, I can't get that nice, uh, oop, and it changes as well, I can't get that nice, um, opacity change and stuff, um, so I really just use it for inking. Um, there are a few advantages, though, possibly, if you need um, to change the size of your project, uh, or if you need to, like, um, just scale it up a lot bigger than it, um, has been drawn, um, vector layers have the advantage of, well, the fact that they're made up of points, as you can see here when I hover over them, even this one, um, raster layers are not made up of points, they, like I said, they're made up of pixels and pixels on a canvas versus points, and, um, so if I needed to, if I just make this a hell of a lot bigger, hopefully this won't kill my computer. <laughs> if I make that really, really big, um, when I zoom in, it's been anti-aliased or aliased, I which one, but um, it ends up with these fuzzy lines um, compared to, let me just hide this. If I then scale this up, Mm, can I make it as big? <laughs> I really want to show the point, but where did it go? Okay, well for one it keeps the width, unless you set it otherwise, and it will stay pretty, pretty sharp, yeah. It's not gonna end up extremely pixelated and fuzzy. So that's uh, one advantage. Um, if you've ever used, let me just leave these off, if you've ever used um, Psy, their pen tool I believe is vector based, I haven't used Psy in years so I don't know if it's updated or changed since, but um, basically that's also uh, points and you're moving those. Um, Clip does go a little bit um, sort of above and beyond with the vector tools, um, that's why I like it so much when it comes to inking. Um, these are all, I'll just showcase the different things that um, Clip does with the vector layers and the tools and then um, go into the speed paint of me uh, doing the majority of the inking. Um, the first, probably the most useful, is um, the way that you can erase with these. Um, let's just say I draw this some reason. <laughs> this is the shape I want, but there's overlapping bits and things that I don't want. There's, um, with the erasers, 
um, if you have this ticked, there's three different settings. There's the normal, you erase whatever you touch, and it adjusts as such. Um, that can be a little bit annoying. Um, my recommendation for that is just to keep really, really um, high resolution images, and then this doesn't really bother you too much. Um, you can erase parts of the line to where they intersect with other lines. So if I wanted to get rid of this bit or this, it'll get rid of that entirely. Or if I wanted to erase um, the entire line that I drew, um, then I just use this, this button. And if I go back a little bit, I can showcase, whoops. Now the entire thing has been erased because I did that with one, you know, and then I lifted my pen up. One line, one swoop, one. <laughs> so um, when it comes to erasing um, overlapping forms, I know I kind of have the trouble where I'll I'll draw something. Like, <laughs> and it'll be great, you know, it's quality artwork right here. And then I'll go to clean up and I'll be like, ugh. <laughs> but then using the, um, especially this middle setting where it intersects, it's a lot easier to sort of clean up and make my art look tidier and more finished. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to um, showcase an example just like this, but um, surely like you can see this and how useful it would be. Um, another thing would be, um, <laughs> well, the fact that you can control individual points. If I wanted to, for some reason, change his hair to be like this, um, it's much easier than drawing an entirely new line. Um, if I wanted to adjust the, um, the line itself with, like, as a whole, you can use, um, these th this, this tool, the pinch vector line tool, it might, I don't know, with each translation patch it's named something different, but um, the ones with these little connecty things. Um, you can change either the line and have the two points um, stay static, so you're only adjusting like the curve. You can have it so it adjusts um, with one of them locked, or both of them free, and you can just up and straight up move the line about. Um, you can also change the width of the lines, the different points, and this is super useful when you want to do really detailed inks. This is not a great example of it. I'll be showing <laughs> a much, much better um, version later. Um, you can also make the lines thinner. Whoa, that's way too... okay. <laughs> make the lines really thin. Um, I don't really use multiple multiplication or division, or really exact width, but if, say, that you wanted your entire picture to be a certain width of line, you can do that as well. Um, also, change the size of the brush and the area to fix, and also you can modify the entire line in one go, such as this. Or you can t take this off and modify parts, and I tend to just modify parts at a time. Um, you can also make the line more simple. Give them a nice... Can I make it a pointy jaw? Or will it just... No. Okay. <laughs> you can make lines, um, change them that way. As well as connect vector lines together. I'm not... Oh, then it'll turn it into one, um... One line to change, as this was two, but now it's one. Um, that sort of thing. As well as even redrawing the lines themselves and making really small adjustments that way. Those ones I don't use too much, but um, hey, you know, those tools are there and they're really useful. Um, I think, yeah, as I mentioned before, this is infinitely scalable, so if for some reason I wanted this beautiful work of art blown up and put on, um, I don't know, the side of a building, <laughs> because this is all vectors, um, it wouldn't go ridiculously fuzzy when scaled up. And um, the only the only thing I'd watch out for is um, because these are all points and because there's more information being saved because it's made up of whoa that's a lot of points <laughs> um, this uh, the file sizes um, will be a bit bigger um, once I'm done with all of my inks usually I'll just um, right click or is it yeah right click 
and change and rasterize it. So now it's a normal raster raster layer. Yay. <laughs> but um so this this will be the work that I'll be inking. Um you'll see me demonstrating um some of these tools uh while inking, but it will be sped up so it might be a bit hard to see, and then I'll go through and um just uh thick thin thicken and thin lines and just adjust things a bit further and really try and show the difference between a standard uh, inked image and where I'd start with that and then how I can use the vector tools to make my inks look that much better. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is the, um, I guess, flat inks. I'm not really too sure what to call them. Um, the inks before I go through and, um, you know, tediously, you know, make things thick and thin and just really um, try and make the flats, uh, make the inks less, um, I guess, flat. Um, there is a little bit of line variation in just the way I, um, you know, put pressure down and that sort of thing, but it isn't really to the degree that I'd like. And... Normally this is where I'd stop with raster inks, just because um, cleaning them up is a bit of a pain. Um, with the... Um, what's the word? <laughs> with the, with the anti-aliasing, um, erasing, and fixing up, um, if the re resolution isn't big enough, um, it can really um, make things look worse, not better. But um, with the vector layer inks, it's um, not something I really have to worry about too much. Um, yeah, I will show the finished image when it's finished, of course. Um, link will be in the description below. Um, I'm not really too sure how to go about speaking about this. My process is pretty, um, isn't that difficult. Um, usually I'll start by going through and thickening the outline, just bringing out the character more, um, from whatever they're, whatever, um, they're standing with around around them. Um, like so- whoa that is way too thick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not to that degree. It'll be- let's try 0 0.8 and do that again. <laughs> um, the, the one thing is I, I use a very um, large range of um, canvas sizes, so sometimes those settings make no difference at all, and sometimes, it, like like just now, I've made it way, way too thick. So I do that. Okay, that's better. And also the inside of the tail here. And what I'm really looking out for is um, overlapping forms, forms that um, 
the, the forms that are in front the most will be the thickest, and forms that move away from the, the viewer um, will tend to be not as thick. Also things at the bottom, um, thinking of weight. Um, it's pretty um, similar to... I, th I, do, I do take into consideration, um, I guess, occlusion shadows and how um, if two objects are touching, they'll tend to be... Um, It'll tend to be darker, but it'll also tend to be thicker, uh, line art wise. Um, so it's really just a matter of um, going in and doing that. Um, objects like hair, um, well, I'll do the thick parts first, and then I'll go in with the um, the subtraction tool too. Um, objects like that, um, also probably on these flowers. Um, it looks really nice if it goes from thick to thin to thick to thin, uh, more so than, I guess, more solid, consistent forms. I've always found that looks really quite nice too. Um, I guess this is where like style comes in a bit more. Um, it's really up to you as to how you want your inks to look. Some people really like delicate inks and... Um, you could also go in and change it so all of your inks have the exact same width. Um, make it look more... Um, not, not that it's done with a, with a mouse, but um, I know there's like a certain uh, aesthetic look. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but um, th there's a lot of um, different ways you could go about um, inking. It's really an art in, in and of itself. and. I'm always going to be super impressed by people who can do it um, with um, traditional means and with raster layers, but um, I don't know, my hand pains, especially at the minute, just will not let me. <laughs> Maybe it's a skill I'll cultivate um, later down the line. But yeah, and oh, that'll be way too big again. So, um, one pixel? Yeah, there we go. And. Yep, this is pretty much it. Um, I hope this will be um, useful to you guys. I'm kind of running out of things to say as I'm just working on this, but um, yeah, I'll go through and probably detail this a bit more, but I think... Ooh, we don't want it to disappear. Um, I think you guys get the idea. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful and I hope it gives you um, the encouragement needed to go give Vector layers some love because they, in my opinion, they need more love. <laughs> yeah, thank you.